Welcome back to the Computer Hardware and OS Essentials Lecture Series. I created these custom lectures based on A plus certification program but with few enhancements to improve your IT technical skills and knowledge. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I'll post a link in the description for the playlist. So this would be our 15th lesson and we will cover printers. The primary objective of this lecture is to learn about printer types and features, understand the basic technical concepts behind printers and plotters, maintenance and basic fundamental troubleshooting concepts. In my previous videos, I have already covered some of the items related to printers in my lecture nine or lesson nine. So if you think that I have missed something, Maybe you should go and check the lesson nine video that will explain some little bit more detail about certain items that we may not cover today. So let's look at the printer types and features. A printer converts digital data into hard copy on paper. Some printers are also a multifunction input devices that can work as a scanner as well. So it is a scanner printer combination. Scanners comes in two uh, primary types, they include the flatbed scanners and ADF scanners, which are also known as automatic document feeder scanners. So basically the flatbed scanners would have a glass flatbed and you put your paper on top of it and then you scan it and the automatic document feeders will have a feeder at the top. You can put a bunch of document uh, papers on the top and it can automatically feed and scan either one side or double side. Types of printers for desktop computing include laser printers, inkjet printers, impact printers, thermal printers, and 3D printers. Printers capable of printing on large paper sizes are known as plotters, which I have already described in my previous lecture. So let's look at laser printers. A laser printer is a type of electrophotographic printer and uses mechanical, electrical, and optical technologies. How laser printers work is basically there is a toner that is placed on electrically charged rotating drum called imaging drum, and the toner is transferred into paper as it moves through the system. So it uses electrical charges, and that is electronically charged that drum in order to print your document. Seven steps in laser printing includes the processing the image. In laser printers, what happen is it create a bitmap of the final page that is stored in the memory of that printer. So whatever you are printing, the laser printers convert uh, whatever the document, even text document into a bitmap image format. And then charging or conditioning happen next. So in that uh, step, the drum surface is charged or all the way to 600 volts. So it could charge up to minus 600 volts. So it's a negative 600 volt charge that the drum gonna have. Then the next step what happens is the exposing or writing. So that happens when the laser beam writes uh, using a 100 volts, negative 100 volts image to the drum surface. Next, it will develop that image. So the toner is applied to the surface of the drum and finally, the transferring and fusing and cleaning happen. So the transferring is when the transfer uh, roller puts the positive charge on the paper to pull the toner from the drum and onto the paper. And the fusing uh, happen when in the fusing assembly uses heat and pressure to fuse the toner to the paper. And finally, the cleaning happen where the drum is clean of residual toner and charge. So the seventh step of laser printing includes processing the image, charging or conditioning, exposing or writing, developing, transferring, fusing, and cleaning. And for your A plus certification exam, you should know this particular step in that order and that may show up on your exams and quizzes. So make sure that you understand the seven steps in laser printing. When it's comes to point color laser printing, basically the writing uh, process repeated four times for each toner color. So you have four toner colors. Uh, and those like, for example, yellow and uh, magenta, et cetera, et cetera. And those toner colors get uh, uh, repeated, like the, the, the process get repeated four times for each, uh, you know, each toner color. So the writing process will be repeated over and over for four times. So make sure that 
uh, you understand this uh, seven step and how this exposing or writing process get repeated four times for the uh, laser uh, printer for your exams and quizzes. So if you look at the inside of a laser printer, this is what typically how the laser printer works. And for your A plus certification exam, you should understand at least basic mechanical uh, and electronic concepts uh, behind a laser printer. So basically you have a fuser, you have paper tray at the bottom, and then the paper goes from the tray across the fuser into the uh, in this chamber and we have the paper get exited on to, uh, at the top and during this process uh, we have the hopper toner hopper we have the laser uh, unit that will be shine onto the drum across a mirror exposing that image and then the photo receptor drum is the one that we were talking about uh, that where the image get processed and then finally you get uh, put it onto the paper and obviously we have the memory associated with the uh, printer somewhere inside the printer that will be holding that uh, uh, the image. So the, remember on the previous uh, screen, I mentioned the bitmap image, that image is, will be stored in the memory while this printing uh, will be happening. So the basic concepts and the basic parts associated with this printer, laser printers, you should be aware of for your A plus certification exam. So if you want to post this video on this uh, slide, slide number six, you can do that so you can understand this, uh, you know, this particular diagram. So the next thing uh, we're gonna discuss is the cartridges and other uh, replaceable parts associated with laser printers. So the parts in the charging, exposing, developing and cleaning steps undergo the most wear as it goes through each cycle and toner uh, cartridges needs replacing most often. So uh, followed by image drum, fuser ca cartridge and transfer assembly. So typically the most common item as a technician, IT technician you will be replacing would be the toner cartridge but eventually you have to replace the drum, the fuse, fuser cartridge as well as the transfer assembly as well. Other printer parts that might need replacing includes the pickup roller and the separation pad. So the pickup roller is the one that pushes forward the sheet of the paper and the separation pad keeps uh, more than one sheet of paper from moving forward. So those kind of parts also do wear off over time, uh, especially in corporate and business environment where you have large uh, expensive laser printers. You don't replace the entire laser printer, you re just replace those parts. Duplexing assembly uh, is another part that you should pay attention to. Uh, a printer that is able to print on both sides of the paper is called a duplex printer and those type of duplex printers have something called a duplexing assembly which turns the paper around and draws it back through the uh, printer. That could also malfunction as the printer ages. Now we're going to switch gear to the inkjet printers. So the overview of inkjet printer technology can be summarized uh, in the way that I have put it together in here. So it uses a type of ink uh, uh, dispersion printing and it doesn't provide high quality resolution of laser printers, especially when it's come to the point text. Inkjet printers even today have a little bit of less text, uh, you know, uh, sharpness compared to a laser printer. However, uh, you know, the, the inkjet printers are good for color printing compared to a laser printing, but in terms of sharpness, the laser inkjet printers are a little bit lagging behind compared to a laser printer. Print head moves across the paper. So one line of text is created with each pass. So the print head will going back and forth and back and forth. And each time it goes across the paper, it will be creating a, a single line of uh, uh, printing. Ink is applied to paper using a matrix of small dots. That's why sometimes you may hear the term dot matrix because it's type of inkjet printer in a way. So inkjet printers also use that type of matrix type of printing. Different types of inkjets form droplets of ink in different ways. For example, bubble jet printers use tubes of ink that have tiny resistors near the end of each tube. So those resistors heat up and cause the ink to boil. A tiny air bubble of ionized ink is then ejected onto the paper 
as it's printing. The plate carrying a magnetic charge directs the path of ink onto the paper to form the shapes. So that's how the inkjet printer works. So the inkjet printers include one or more ink uh, cartridges to hold different colors of ink. A, st a stepper motor moves the print head and ink cartridges across the paper using a cartridge and belt to move the assembly and a stabilizing bar. So that's how basically how the, the heads moves across the paper. Some inkjet printers offer duplex printing, just like some laser printers do offer duplex printing. So be sure to use heavy paper so ink doesn't bleed uh, when you are using uh, inkjet printers uh, that can do duplex printing. So unlike laser printers, that there is a possibility of bleeding of the ink. So you can sometimes buy paper directly from the manufacturer. For example, HP has something called color lock technology paper. This is a little bit of expensive paper, but the thing is that will guarantee the inkjet printers will print properly on their paper and on both sides. Especially when you're doing duplex printing, you have to be careful about uh, uh, wetting your paper with too much ink causing it to bleed across. Inkjet printers buying advice, the best advice we can give you is look for a printer that uses two or four separate cartridges. In 2022, most inkjet printers will have at least four cartridges, uh, including black. So it's rarely you would find two uh, type uh, uh, inkjet uh, cartridges nowadays uh, in the corporate and business environment. But in home use environment, you might find multi-colored one cartridge and a black cartridge. Have therefore just creating two cartridges. So you could look for two or four separate cartridges. But I would recommend for corporate and business environment, you go with the four separate cartridge inkjet printers. Now we're gonna switch gear again. This time we're gonna look at impact printers. So overview of the impact printer technology can be summarized as uh, best known impact printer are dot matrix printers. So it is similar to that of the inkjet that use a dot matrix printing system. But this is specifically we call dot matrix printers. Uh, the, a print head moves across width of the paper just like the inkjet printer. Pins are used to print matrix of dots on the page. So the pin shoot against a cloth ribbon and the ribbon impacts the paper and deposits ink. So it is similar to that of a typewriter, but that's how the, you know, the dot matrix or impact printers work. The three reasons impact printers are still in use today is the continuous tractive, sorry, tractive Turf feed allows event and data logging. So it is very easy for a long term use printers like a long um, uh, continuous use printers uh, and can use the carbon paper, hence, print multiple copies at the same time. So you can print. Uh, you can insert a carbon paper that require that kind of uh, a impact in order to have those carbon paper print the same information on multiple copies. So the dot matrix uh, impact printers allow that uh, carbon printer to function uh, so that it will give you uh, multiple copies of the same carbon print. And these type of printers are also extremely durable compared to laser printers, compared to inkjet printers. These type of impact printers last longer in the field uh, as opposed to those inkjet and laser printers. They have more moving parts and more likely to break compared to these printers. Guidelines for maintaining uh, these type of uh, print heads include keep the printer in a cool, well-ventilated area and do not uh, print over 50 to 70 pages without a cool down cycle. So you can continuously print without breaking down. It is more reliable. It lasts longer. It can support carbon paper. So and all sorts of uh, features like that. However, you know, you need to take into account consideration of heating uh, or wearing out the uh, parts if you print um, uh, continuously more than 75 pages, for example. Now we're going to switch gear again. This time we're going to look at the thermal printers. So the thermal printers use heat to create an image. So there is no ink, technically speaking, involved in printing uh, using uh, you know thermal printers. 
So there are two types of thermal printers. Those are called direct thermal printers and thermal transfer uh, printers. So the direct thermal printers involve burning the dots onto special coated paper called thermal paper and often used as receipt printers. So if you go to Walmart, if you go to Best Buy, if you go to Superstore, any store like Canadian Tire, for example, the receipt that you are getting is, is basically a direct thermal uh, printer. Most likely the, uh, the, the, the receipt is printed using those direct direct thermal paper. So that, that means it has a thermal paper and the direct thermal printing is the re, re, how it is get, etched onto your that paper that the receipt that you are getting. Thermal transfer printer uses a ribbon that contains wax based ink and heating elements melts the ribbon onto the thermal paper and used to print receipt barcode labels, clothing labels or uh, uh, container labels. So reliable and easy to maintain and they are often used in printing labels as opposed to receipts themselves. So one of the reasons why uh, if you take a receipt from a store and put it under a heat source like such as a light bulb, that will destroy your uh, receipt. And that's why I always recommend uh, company owners to scan their receipt as soon as they get them because these type of direct thermal papers that you get, uh, you know, can actually uh, fade away over time. So if you're keeping for tax purposes, like in Canada, you're supposed to keep your tax receipt for, I believe, up to eight to 10 years. So you better scan them. So because the receipt can fade away with heat because direct thermal paper can do that. Thermal transfer paper, however, uh, have less likely to do that because it basically is using thermal ribbon, but the actual paper printing on top of uh, on it is not a thermal paper. So that will last a little bit longer. So keep that in mind. So the receipt that you are getting at actual thermal paper printed uh, receipt. So don't put it under heat sources that will actually fade information away. Inform your end user about that as well. So keep that in mind. 3D printers, so we're gonna switch another time and a different uh, subject. So the 3D printers use a plastic uh, filament to build a 3D model of a digital image. So when setting up a 3D printer, make sure the printer is level and you follow the manufacturer's guidelines on how to set up for 3D printing. Pre-made images are available online, so you can download CAD diagrams that can be inserted into your 3D printer, or if you want to design your own image, you'll need a 3D modeling program, a CAD program to do it. Make sure you do some research online for tips on getting a cleaner finished product, and always, always follow the manufacturer's guideline because there are many different version of 3D printers that is very hard for an IT technician to know every little bit, little bit detail on. So if you are servicing a specific type of 3D printer, go to manufacturer's documentation and go through that, that information so that you can understand how to help uh, your end user. Next thing we're gonna look at is using Windows to install, share, and manage printers. In this part of the chapter, you will learn to install local and network printers, to share and install printer, to remotely use a shared printer, learn about virtual printing and cloud printing, and how you can configure printer add-ons and features. Local or network printer. So printers can connect to a single computer or a network. A local printer connects directly to a computer using a port or wireless connection, while the network printer has an Ethernet port to connect directly to your local area network, or it can use the Wi-Fi to connect to a wireless access point, hence connecting to your LAN. Two ways to install a printer and make it available on a network include shared local printer and network printer. In a situation where you have a shared local printer, what happened is share the printer through the computer's network connection. So this is a situation sometimes happens in uh, office and corporate environment. You have a server and you have a local printer that is connected through a USB cable, for example, uh, to the server. And the server is always running 24 seven. So you're gonna create a shared local printer there. However, everybody in the local area network have access to that server, now can print to that printer because it is a local printer currently shared within the local area network. So that's how uh, a shared local printer works. 
A network printer, however, can directly connect to a network with its own network interface card. So there is no need to go through a separate server or a, a desktop computer, etc. So it is directly connecting to your local area network. Identify on the network by its IP address. So it will have its own IP address. It will connect with the same subnet mask as the your local area network. And any computer can install this printer and print to it. Uh, and it is called a call remote uh, printing. And when I say any computer can install this printer and print to it, I mean like assuming that you have network policies to allow that because you can put group policies and network policies implement there where you can actually limit who can have access to your network printers, uh, but you can make policies so that anyone can print or certain group of people can print. So when I say any computer can install this printer and print to it, I mean like assuming that you have a policy that anyone uh, ha have who has access to the local area network will have access to network printers within your system. So that's what I meant by that. But however, it can be controlled and managed using access controls and access control list. So here is a diagram that is showing basically, so you can have a direct network printer that will allow any of these machines to directly print to that network printer, or you can have a local printer that is connected to a server or always on computer. Um, and that will allow these users to print to this printer through that computer or server. Keep in mind, in this situation, this type of local printer situation, if this computer or server shuts down, none of these people or uh, individual uh, devices, end users would be able to print to this local printer uh, because it has to go through this local connection, right? The, you, if the, you shut down this particular computer or server, nobody will have access to this local printer. But with network printers, doesn't matter who shut down the computer as long as the local area network is up and running and the network printer has a connection to the network, it should be good to print, uh, take print requests from anybody. Wired or wireless uh, printer connections. So connecting a wired printer can be done through either USB. So basically you plug the USB cable into the printer and the computer and the Windows install the printer automatically with Windows 10 and Windows 11. Uh, it's very easy. You basically plug it in the USB cable and most Windows uh, uh, programs will automatically install the drivers right away as long as you have an internet connection. However, if you don't have internet connections or for whatever the reason the Windows 10 and Windows 11 fail to auto install your USB printer, you can install the drivers uh, either by down going to manufacturer's website and downloading it or through a USB or a, U uh, or a CD that uh, your organ the, the printer will come with. So I don't, I haven't seen CDs with uh, printer software uh, being de uh, delivered uh, with the printers nowadays in 2022. Most of the time it's either USB key or you had to go to the internet and download those software. The reason why you may want to download the printer software anyway, even if the Windows automatically installs the printer, is that that will give you more capabilities and features you otherwise won't have. Especially with multifunction printers where they have scanning capabilities uh, optical uh, uh, text recognition, et cetera, et cetera, those kind of features, you may want to install the HP or a brother or a, you know, a Canon or whatever the printer software, even if the Windows automatically installed the drivers and the printer is ready to go. So keep that in mind. You can just simply plug in the USB printer and it will most likely gonna work right out of the box with automated uh, driver uh, installation by Windows 10 and Windows 11. However, it may be beneficial for you to install the software on your end clients uh, specific to that printer that will give you some additional features. Serial printers still do exist, even in 2022, unfortunately. Those are uh, plug serial cable into the printer and the computer, and you have to install the printer as a local printer, and you have to configure those things. Typically, modern Windows cannot, uh, you know, uh, automatically install drivers for serial printers, so you need to make sure you follow through those steps. Keep in mind, Windows, including Windows 11, still support serial printers. There is a misconception out there that if you upgrade your computers to Windows 11 or uh, Microsoft Server 2022, your serial printers will stop working. That is not true. 
one of the key reason why most corporations as well as large scale businesses and enterprises still use Microsoft products is that most of the Microsoft products are backward compatible. So you can have Windows 11 supporting a serial uh, printer as long as you can find those drivers. And most of the time, if the manufacturer sometimes doesn't have those drivers, the Microsoft will make the drivers themselves and give it to you because they just want to make sure that the backward compatible is there for especially for corporate and uh, business environments. Ethernet printers, basically you plug the uh, Ethernet cable into the printer and the network uh, wall jack. Uh, switch or router and then you need to install the printer as a network printer on any computer on the network and you can uh, go through that process by just installing like any other networking device. Uh, keep in mind some Ethernet uh, network uh, uh, connector printers are not just plug and play. You may have to refresh uh, the DSCP IPs uh, so that you will get that DSCP IP uh, on the printer. So you need to refresh the uh, the DSCP connection on the uh, printer so it will obtain an IP address. And you can also do static IP address, which I highly recommend with network printers, where you may assign an IP address uh, uh, that is static to your network printer. So that, to do that, you just have to follow through the manufacturer's uh, recommendations and the steps for uh, configuring IP addresses for your network printer. So keep that in mind. Connecting a wireless printer is basically there are a couple of types of wireless printers uh, connections you can use. Uh, the one is called Bluetooth connection. Basically you turn on the Bluetooth in the windows and move the printer within the range of the computer and you can direct print from your Bluetooth uh, connected device such as a laptop or a cell phone uh, to the printer as a result of that. The other option uh, is the Wi-Fi infrastructure network type of printer uh, connection. Uh, in that type of wireless connection, a Wi-Fi device connect to a Wi-Fi access point. So how that basically works is your printer gonna connect to an access point in your network and that's how it's gonna connect to your local area network. Wi-Fi ad hoc network, that is connecting the printer and the computer directly to the, each other in a Wi-Fi ad hoc mode network. So it is, the similar to that of Bluetooth connection, what it's going to allow is to you, uh, you to directly print from your uh, mobile or desktop device that has a Wi-Fi ad hoc network connection directly to the printer. So the, the connection between directly between the printer uh, and, the, uh, and, and the device. So what that means is basically, so the, for the Bluetooth, you have a, um, uh, you have a print, uh, uh, device and you have a printer, right? And then how the Bluetooth gonna work, the printer and device gonna communicate directly. And with the Wi-Fi ad hoc, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna communicate directly. But with the Wi-Fi infrastructure, what you, what happened is that uh, you have a, a printer, right? And then that printer gonna get connected uh, to an access point, like an AP. And that access point is connected to maybe a switch. And then that switch may be connected to a router and then that's how, uh, and if you have a computer here, that computer uh, may be directly connected to this access point and then, uh, then access point then can handle that information across the routing uh, here, like go like this and then connect to the printer or your computer may be connected directly to the router and in that case goes like this and connect to the printer. So that's how they communicate to the printer. So with the Wi-Fi ad hoc network and the Bluetooth, it's gonna be a direct communication like this. And with the Wi-Fi infrastructure network, it's gonna be connection across a access point and through a router to the printer. So there are some advantages of each one of them. The advantages of this type is that it is highly manageable. So if you have large number of users print into this printer, you can manage those print queues and you can manage who has access to the printer and it is easy to manage the printer and you have full control over the printer as a network administrator. In this type of connection, you do not have that type of granular control as a network administrator because each user can direct connect to the printer and print. So you will lose uh, the ability to control who get access to what 
printer and how much of uh, printing, for example. In here, you can do a lot of policy control using Microsoft Group Policy and many other uh, network configuration. This is just a little bit of a high level overview. You don't need to know the difference between these two types, uh, but this is just giving you some additional information just in case you want to know. This is not something that's gonna show up on your A plus exam. This will show up on your CCNA, CCNP exam. If you're interested in those, I have already done those lectures on my YouTube channel. You can go ahead and check them out. So next thing we're gonna look at is the installing a local or network printer. Operating systems capable print uh, drivers are required. So depending on your operating system, different printer drivers may have to be installed. Uh, use 32-bit drivers for 32-bit operating system and 64-bit drivers for 64-bit operating systems. So nowadays, most operating system will be running on 64-bit, so keep that in mind. And the Windows has many drivers built in or drivers that can be downloaded from the manufacturer's website. For some types of printers, you can launch the installation program on the CD that came bundled with the printer or you can download those programs from the internet. Uh, use the Windows 10 or Windows 11 settings app or Windows uh, 10, 11, uh, 8, 7 uh, devices and printers window in the control panel to install a printer. Sharing a printer on a network. So there are ways to share a printer uh, to use uh, as a you know shared printer. The integrated print server is uh, one method which provides its own integrated print server embedded in the firmware on the printer's hardware itself. So basically you directly connect the uh, printer uh, like a network printer to your local area network and it's gonna have a print server integrated within in its uh, you know hardware. So it will have a cache memory that will be handling print queues. Computer as a print server can be done as well. So you can manage all print jobs from one centralized location. This is a situation in most corporate and business environment. You'll be using a server as a, a print, uh, uh, you know, actual physical server as a print server. It's a part of the components of that physical server will act like a print server. Other network uh, hardware include the print server software that might be embedded in other network devices such as a router or a firewall. So for example, certain Cisco enterprise uh, routers uh, can actually handle print servers as well. You can install certain print servers and some firewall mechanisms do have the ability to control who can print and using access control lists, for example, and allow even remote printing. Like for example, you could have someone connected to your network uh, thousands of miles away can print to your office printer that can be handled by your firewall, for example. So there are three different types of uh, sharing a printer, like a main three different types. So in terms of securing a shared printer, uh, so you need to secure the printer itself. So the click the security tab on the printer's properties box to manage who has access to the uh, printer and permissions allowed. Uh, and you can also use, as I mentioned, the access control list, also known as ACLs. If you don't know what access control lists or ACLs, it is a little bit high level. You don't need to know as an A plus certification program person that you are studying for that as a student. But if you're doing uh, CCNA, CCNP programs, I have already posted a few videos on my YouTube channel, over 50 hours of videos explaining uh, CCNA program. Uh, you can go and watch those videos, then that will give you a better understanding about how ACLs works. So access control list is basically a way of controlling who get access to what printers and resources uh, in your network or uh, computer architecture. So, uh, so you need to also secure data. So the documents sent to the printers are cached. So to prevent these from being hacked, don't allow uh, caching. You can do that. So in the advanced tab, you can go to printer properties box and select print directly to the printer that will prevent caching. And if you're using caching, using uh, a system such as a Microsoft Windows Server 2022 uh, print servers, uh, with a print server uh, you know function, uh, if you have a print server function or role installed in there, you can de decide how much to cache and how long to keep that cache. Uh, you can even keep cache indefinitely for uh, auditing purposes. So, you know, there are many things you can do with certain programs, which I will not go into detail, uh, but you should know those th uh, items, uh, those options do exist. So use a share printer. Uh, so there are three ways to install a shared printer on a remote uh, uh, computer that use the setting app, 
use the device and print a window and use file explorer and windows explorer so again i'm not going to, not going to go through them i will show you some screenshots but i'm not going to go through the actual uh, process because try, i'm trying my best to keep these lectures as uh, short as possible but it's really hard so let's see how we can do that today uh, so here is a, a screenshot of a, a, a you know how to locate a shared printer on a network basically you can uh, go and select the printer from adding a printer and you can use the network connection right here see in here you can uh, in, enter the network path uh, and connect to a printer as well and the network printers will have this little uh, green um, uh, you know symbol with the windows 10 and windows 11 that's what the windows used to denote the network printer this green uh, stick sticking out underneath the printer next we're going to cover virtual printing so the virtual printing is uh, printing a file uh, it, uh, you know printing a document to a file instead of to actual printer print itself so it's not actually printing to a physical paper it's printing to a file so instead of producing a hard copy of your document it's going to produce a file so option for virtual printing include PDF file, which is a very popular uh, method and the image file, it is also called, also called a bitmap file, XPS file and print to file. And all of those things um, are used when you don't need a hard copy of the document, but you need to print it to a, a system where you can carry to another uh, device or computer. So you can print a document to a PDF file and then you can save it or to a USB file or something like that. So you can carry around example would be you are using a specialized accounting software and the engineering department don't have access to that software you can print your document to a pdf file and put it into a usb stick or put it into your network drive now your engineering department can simply open that file and look at the uh, cost uh, associated with the project instead of getting uh, going through your accounting software so that's the that's one of the major reasons why we use the uh, virtual printing it allow flexibility across multiple different softwares without the need to having to print those uh, information onto a physical paper. Cloud printing is the next topic that we're gonna cover. So with cloud printing, you can print to a printer anywhere on the internet from a computer or mobile device. So a type of client server application uh, is what happening here. So in cloud printing, so you can print to a printer thousands of kilometers away as I mentioned before through the cloud printing system examples of cloud printing software include the Google Cloud Print, Uniprint, Infinity etc etc and for best security make sure your software can encrypt a document for print jobs sent over the internet or you use a VPN connection because you can technically do cloud printing using VPN as well so it's technically a cloud cloud printing like if you have a employee thousands of kilometers away you're connecting to VPN printing you could look at that as a cloud printing even though it is not uh, because it technically you're printing to a remote location that's what make it a cloud printing configuring printer features and add-on devices so use the printer uh, properties box to manage printer features and hardware devices and some proper uh, printers uh, how you can do it is to click the device settings tab uh, then the main tab lets you control the size of the paper, page orientation, quality of printing, color options, duplex printing, various add-on devices. And these are all unique to certain uh, printer models for each printer model and to each manufacturer. So that's why I cannot go through each and every single one of these in this lecture. You just need to know these things exist, right? Just keep in mind. So it, depending on your print is HP or a Canon or a different model numbers or brother, all right? And uh, the, the the way how this is, uh, the settings tabs work may be slightly differ from each other. So refer to the manufacturer's uh, information. Now we're gonna look at a little bit about uh, printer maintenance. Uh, so basically, Again, extending printer life is the primary focus uh, on when it's come to the point printer maintenance. Again, follow the manufacturer's direction for uh, device use and perform necessary routine maintenance. So if you don't perform necessary routine maintenance and sometimes you make, making sure to the, using the manufacturer's quality product instead of the third party product that may or may not have, excuse me, may or may not have um, you know quality control issues uh, you know it is important that you perform those routine maintenance because otherwise you might end up in a situation like this one you know 
uh, the this is a laser printer exploding they do happen even with the necessary maintenance but uh, doing maintenance properly on time and using the proper manufactured uh, uh, certified product you can avoid a situation like this online support for printing so on printer manufacturers website look for online documentation knowledge base also known as kb of common problems updated device drivers replacement parts and printer maintenance kits so those will help you figure out all the things that you need to know for supporting your printers for your end client uh, protection when working inside a printer include turn off the printer unplug it wait for about 30 minutes because there are capacitors inside laser printers that can hold a huge charge of up to 600 volts or above that can uh, discharge through you when you touch it and that can actually even cause death so be careful when you're working with especially laser printers if you want to open it up uh, there's a, uh, a risk of electric shock even after unplugging the printer so maybe wait ab about 30 minutes hold down the power button and if there are certain procedures um, you know um, documented by the manufacturers of discharging those printers follow those instructions before you start playing with it before you start trying to fix it never look at the laser beam of laser printers after you open it even if it is unplugged because you never know it might actually have some little bit of charge and it start you know laser might turn on by mistake or something like that so don't never look into the laser beam itself just like you are working with fiber optics always assume the laser beam is on use an uh, anti-static ground bracelet so you will not discharge uh, uh, you know uh, electrical discharge into uh, important electric non electronic components just like i have already discussed anti-static uh, bracelets in my previous lectures and have some help nearby so when you're working with uh, laser print especially make sure that you have someone nearby so that if you go going uh, if you have electric shock or something like that something bad happened you drop the print on your toe or something there's always somebody to help you out general direction to uh, replace a cartridge uh, include turn on the printer and open the front cover uh, the reason why you need to turn on the printer in replacing cartridges because most printers have certain assemblages that will move so if you turn off the printer that won't move so that's why you need to turn on the printer and open the front cover that will move the assemblage so it's easy for you to replace the cartridge not all printers have that but some printers do Printers releases the uh, uh, cartridges, uh, 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 you know, so you can open the latch on the top of the cartridge to remove it and then install the new cartridge. Cleaning a printer. As part of routine uh, printer maintenance, clean outside of the printer with a damp cloth. Do not use ammonia base cleaners because ammonia based cleaners can destroy printer heads and can also damage plastic and other pieces in your com printer so do not use ammonia based cleaners specific cleaners you can buy to clean printers there are certain printer cleaners that you can buy i would recommend that you actually use some, one of those clean the inside of the printer with a dry cloth do not blow out toner with compressed air do you guys know why you shouldn't do that well, if you use a one of those air compressor cleaners, the, the air can, can cleaners that we use for cleaning compute, most of the computer devices on, on um, toners, the toner ink, the toner dust can blow out of the cartridge and then go everywhere. So that's why you should not use the toner, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, should not use compressed air cans uh, for cleaning laser printers. Maybe some areas of the laser printer, certainly not the toner itself. So be careful with that. Two uh, safe tools include the toner certified vacuum cleaners and uh, extension magnet uh, uh, brush. So even vacuum cleaners can suck up those toner ink out of the cartridge. So you need to buy certain toner certified vacuum cleaners, not just any vacuum cleaner. Certainly don't use shop vac uh, with a very high power shop vac to clean your printers. That is a bad, bad idea. In fact, you shouldn't be using that even on your computers and servers. Calibrating a printer. Software may be used to clean inkjet nozzles and calibrate or align cartridges. So how to access the tools different from printer to printer and the model to model. So that's where you still need to go back to your manufacturer's guidelines. You might use the menu on the printer's control panel or use the software that come with the, uh, uh, with the printer uh, to learn how you can access those items or you have to go to the actual documentation. If an inkjet printer is still does not print after calibrating it, 
you can check the card read nozzles that may have to be manually cleaned and check the printer's manufacturer's website for other directions. Laser printers automatically calibrate themselves periodically, but sometimes you need to do manual calibration for those laser printers as well. So here is an example of a guy cleaning up the print head, the nozzle head. That's, uh, but however, remember you should not uh, put uh, this uh, you know this uh, cleaning uh, items on the heads itself you just clean the around the head so the he nozzle head itself should not be clean when you are cleaning the head you are basically cleaning the uh, the head assembly but not the head itself so clean the area around the nozzle uh, plate that is the head assembly but with the damp cotton swab but never ever clean the head itself and make sure this cotton swab doesn't get those little you know the little parts of the swab doesn't get stick around uh, after you clean it so make sure visually inspect that before you put back the cartridge back on your inkjet printer printer maintenance kits so printer maintenance kits include specific printer components, step-by-step -step instructions for performing maintenance, tips for how often print, printer maintenance should be done, and special tools or equipment uh, that you need uh, to do the maintenance. That includes the utilities that you need uh, and printer uh, buttons, for example. Uh, and when you are purchasing printer maintenance kits, make sure that you're purchasing the kit that is specific to your, not only your uh, manufacturer, uh, but also the device model, because not all HP printers and laser printers, for example, have the same printer maintenance kit. And a lot of IT technicians use these printer maintenance kits uh, to uh, perform maintenance because that will guaranteed success as opposed to try to source uh, uh, all those parts and uh, stuff that you need to do to perform the maintenance. Examples of replacing uh, printer uh, uh, consumables uh, typically follow replacing a toner cartridge, replacing an image drum, replacing a fuser when it's come to the point laser printers. Those are the most common items that you will be replacing as an IT technician. Now we're gonna switch gear to troubleshooting printers. In this part of the lecture, you will learn general and specific printer troubleshooting tips. The first thing you need to do before troubleshooting any printer or any technical device, networking IT devices or hardware devices or software, anything to do with IT, the first thing you should do is interview the user. So find out what works and what doesn't work and make an initial determination of the problem. Doesn't matter what IT problem it is, whether it's a printer problem or something else, the first thing you need to do is to interview the user. So ask questions from the, uh, the user. When you think the problem is solved, ask the user to check things to make sure that he, he or she is satisfied with your work. That is very important as well. So once you think you have fixed the issue, not only that you are satisfied that the issue has been resolved, you need to make sure your user is satisfied as well. After the problem is resolved, make sure that you document the symptoms and what you did to solve the problem. This is a huge step that most organizations and IT department miss. IT people comes in, fix a problem, and they never document anything and then they leave the job or they go on vacation or something and the same problem occurs that during that time and then the next IT person has to also start from the step zero because reason for that is they don't have any documentation of that problem that was resolved previously and how it was resolved. So make sure you document the symptoms and the steps that you took to solve the problem for your IT team. So we're gonna look at Printer does not print. So use flowchart uh, on the next slide that I'm gonna show you to isolate the problem and isolate the problem to one of the following areas. The application attempting to use uh, the printer uh, or the windows, uh, you know, like the, check the application, windows uh, settings and the print drivers, printer itself, connectivity between the uh, computer and its local printer and the network printer. So this, here's the flowchart that the A-plus certification program typically uh, uh, provided to the, um, the students. So you start with the problem and you go through, hey, you know, can you print from the application? Yes or no. And you follow through these steps until you find the solution. I'm not gonna go through any more detail about this flowchart. However, you should be familiar with how to follow a flowchart. So what these 
square uh, rectangle means what this uh, you know the, this uh, particular you know uh, shape means what does the stop mean and start means all of, it's very simple you just need to follow it's basic english but you need to know how to create a flowchart and how to read a flowchart in your a plus certification program you can post your video here and you know if you want to look into a little bit more detail i'm trying to keep this video as short as possible unfortunately it's going to be a little bit long today as well so let's see how we can do that so we have a problem where uh, printer does not print. So problems uh, printing uh, from an application on the client computer, try to print uh, a, a Windows test page. If the test page print, problem is with the application or the file it is uh, attempting to print because you, the Windows can directly print to the printer, right? That's why. Make sure the correct printer is selected in the application print menu. Try uh, using the application to print a file. Uh, by the way, when I say application, that means like a Word, uh, Excel, uh, something like that. That's what I mean by application or your accounting program. Uh, when you when I say direct uh, print, that means you're printing directly from the software for the printer or the Windows uh, print uh, pages, test pages. Uh, try uh, uh, to print a different file type, then print uh, that file from a different application verify that enough hard drive space is available for the operating system to create uh, temporarily uh, print files and try replacing or reinstalling the application so those are the steps you can take uh, problems uh, printing from the windows uh, uh, one moment uh, yeah so problems uh, printing from the windows delete all uh, print jobs in the uh, print queue uh, if the uh, Windows test page uh, stalls in the queue, check is the printer on, is the paper in the printer is there, does the control panel show any errors? That means the control panel of the printer itself shows an error. Do a quick check to uh, be sure you have communication with the printer. Ping the printer, so you can, if it is a network printer, you can ping the printer using command prompt and check the cable connection if applicable. Reset the Windows print spool uh, service. You can do that through the Windows. And I will show you those demonstration on a separate video. Uh, reboot the computer, uh, reboot the printer itself too, and check manufacturer's website for updated uh, printer drivers and disable printer cache. So those are things uh, you can do. Uh, problem with the uh, uh, printer itself. Uh, so verify the printer is on and has the paper. Look for an error message or error code in the control panel on the front of the printer. That means the, that screen that I mentioned before. Print a self-test page and review that test page for clues. So most printers have a self-test page. That means it doesn't need to have any connection to any device. It's not taking any information from a, a print request from anything. It's just printing a, a page by itself. So you can do that test page test. The test page not printing, try resetting the printer and then try the following, troubleshoot the printer until it prints correctly. Check paper issues, cover issues, cartridge issues, uh, power uh, source issues, uh, reset the printer, check documentation, make sure all the doors of the printer, such as the door where you open to put your uh, you know, laser printer cartridges, for example, are properly closed and those cartridges are all, way, all the way in. So those things are also very important. If still cannot uh, get the printer to work, take the printer to certified repair shop. That means you run out of exhausted all your options. Again, this is just a general overview. This is this does not mean uh, the only way you can uh, fix or go through uh, printer fixing, uh, but it's just a general overview, right? Keep that in mind. Problems with connectivity for a network printer or shared printer. Uh, you can uh, test if the if the test page uh, prints but the windows uh, test page does not print then the connectivity might be the issue that means the test page itself print from directly from the printer but not from the your device that you are trying to print from right so consider that the entire network might be down so check the client can communicate with other devices in the network maybe your office corporate server for example if the client can, does not have connection to the operate corporate server then Maybe it's a network, it's not the printer. Check if the IP address information on the printer is correct. Verify configuration, ping the printer and run diagnosis. So you can follow these steps to resolve problems with uh, shared printers. Is enough hard drive space available on the client or host computer? Uh, did you get an access denied message? If so, you might have access, you might not have the access to the host computer. That means there is some kind of ACL, access control list, or some kind of a, 
uh, you know, pro uh, uh, the authentication problem between the computer or the user and the printer. Uh, on the host computer, open the printer's property box and click security tab and select everyone uh, and make sure permissions for uh, everyone includes permission to print or if you have access control list or if you have the Windows Server 2022, for example, with the uh, print server installed, you have that, uh, that particular print server configured so that everybody can print or certain groups can print. Or users can print and using windows on the client computer delete the printer and then install the printer again that's a really good way to actually make sure there are no errors in the installation process so now we're going to look at like poor quality print so that can cause by printer drivers the application windows or the printer so the poor quality uh, for laser printers uh, may be fixed by unplugging the printer and allow it to cool for 30 minutes Maybe they heat up too much. Uh, uh, rock the cartridge to uh, redistribute the toner or replace the cartridge. So basically you pull the cartridge out and you just basically shake it a little bit and rock it a little bit, like shake it and put it back in. Uh, econ mode, uh, which use uh, less toner, that might be on. Uh, so if you have economy mode turn on or econ mode turn on, that may be why your print looks really bad. So in that case, you can either uh, change the type of econ mode some printers some corporate enterprise printers allow you to change different type of econ mode like very high low medium for example or you can completely turn the econ mode off to get good quality prints paper quality might be uh, not be the high enough so especially for laser printers and inkjet double-sided inkjet printers uh, so make sure paper quality is good printer might need cleaning or heads need to be clean ensure printer does not require routine maintenance and if it does require routine maintenance make sure that is performed on time laser drum might be needed to be replaced distorted images can cause uh, by foreign materials as well so make sure there are no foreign materials on the printer head or the printer spools for example or the drum if page has a gray background, image drum is worn out and that needs to be replaced. So ghosted images are usually caused by a problem with the laser printer image drum. So remember those image drum that needed to be replaced uh, routinely. Poor quality print for inkjet printers. Uh, you can check is there correct paper quality being used, especially for double sided as I mentioned before, is the ink uh, supply low? So in that case, remove uh, and uh, reinstall cartridges. Uh, follow printer's documentation to clean uh, each uh, nozzle. Clean sponge uh, near the uh, car uh, cartridge uh, test. Uh, if printing uh, transparencies change the fill uh, pattern in your application. So if the you know if there is that kind of issue, that's what you need to do. Missing lines or dots on the printed page can be caused by the ink nozzle drying out. So you can fix that by cleaning up the ink nozzles. Uh, streaks uh, or lines down the page can be caused by the dust or dirt or in the print head assemblage. In that case, you can also clean that as well. Uh, Grabble uh, characters on paper or gobble characters on the paper. That means the, the, the characters are printing on top of each other, for example. So in that situation, cancel all print jobs in the queue and try printing a different document from the same application. Print using a different application because sometimes the application have a hard time communicating with the printer because of different uh, you know, communication methodologies. That's why it is happening. For example, accounting software sometimes cannot directly print to a printer, uh, a certain printers because it doesn't know how to communicate with that particular printer. Is the USB cable securely connected to the both ends, even USB printers? Power down printer by pressing the reset button, update printer drivers, and printer might need servicing at the end if none of those things work. Another issue you may uh, uh, come across is called the low memory errors. Uh, possible indications of low memory could be only parts of the page prints. So if you're printing a bunch of pages, only parts of the page print, not, not the entire page. Printer may have a, a flashing light, like it's saying like it is busy. Printer may display messages on the display such as 20 mem overflow, out of memory, low memory, uh, uh, or uh, you know, uh, you could also have a, a like let's say thousand page print that, uh, document that is printing, but it's only print about 500 pages or 300 pages and stop printing. That's another indication that printer memory cannot handle that. 
So install more memory or print only simple pages with few graphics. Uh, print a self-test page to verify how much memory is installed. And one of the uh, more elaborate, more complex way of fixing low memory issues is basically installing a, a shared printer onto a server because servers are way more powerful and have a lot of memory. So you can have, for example, Windows Server 2022, where you install a print server and then the now the server hardware is being used to queue all those print requests. So the printer is not being exhausted as a result. That is way more than memory you need for printing and you can print 5,000 pages documents in one go even on that situation. So that's a more elaborate way of fixing a low memory issue, especially in corporate and business environments. The another one, uh, the final one that we're gonna quickly go over is the wrong print colors. So some paper is designed to print on only one side. So if you are printing on those type of papers, make sure you are putting the right side up. So it will printing on that particular side, especially with photo paper. Photo paper is, is not typically double side printing. It's only single side printing. So you need to make sure the photo paper is inserted properly. So try flipping the paper over to make sure that the, the correct side is, uh, show, is showing up on the right side. Adjust the quality of print. So you can change the quality of print uh, to make sure the co correct colors are being printed. So yellow is actually true yellow, not like faded yellow, for example. For uh, an inkjet printer, try cleaning the ink uh, uh, cartridges and calibrating the printer. For laser printer, uh, try calibrating uh, the printer uh, itself as well. And that is the end of this lecture. Please thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, good luck with your exams. And peace.